Welcome back everyone to George James and Associates Research Tools channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the age variable from your data. What you should have done is you should have had a question that asked the year in which your participants were born. And so what we're going to do is create a new column here. And we're just going to call this column age. This is very, very simple. So what you want to do, especially because if when you're going to be analyzing data as continuous variables, especially in an OLS regression, what you're going to want to do is you're going to not what you're not going to want to do rather is you're not going to want to have data here that has these commas. Now it's showing commas here, but if you can look up here, it shows that they're not there. I'm not entirely certain that the commas won't mess some things up in the regression analysis because usually it just it doesn't want to have commas in it. So just to ensure that we get rid of the commas, what we're going to do. Um, we're going to create the extra age column, but what also we're going to do is we're going to create really quickly. We're just going to create another row here at the top. Actually, it doesn't have to be the top. I don't really care. Okay, sure. So it's at the top and above that, we're going to put 2023. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit equal and we're going to take 2023 left click that and then click F4 because that's going to anchor this. So all when we drag it down, it's always going to be 2023. And then we're going to subtract our value in the C column, and that's going to give us the age. So 2023 minus 2002 should be 21. There you go. And then we drag it down. Now, here's the problem. And this is this may be a little bit of a soapbox on my part, um, just to warn you. But the way in America, the way, I don't know how it is in other countries, but in America, whenever you are conducting research and you are going through the IRB process, for some reason in the United States, if you are 17 years old, you are protected by your, the data privacy laws when it comes to school, which means that your parents cannot call you or I'm sorry, they can't call, they can call you. They can't call the school. They can't call your professor. They can't call the administrator. They can't call the department chair or the dean and ask for your grades. Even if they're funding your college, it doesn't matter. Um, unless the student has given cons written consent to us, we cannot release that information even to their parents, even if they're 17 or younger. Okay. Now I say 17 because most of the time you're not going to graduate high school before 17, but it would apply, right? If you're a brainchild or something, you're a genius, it would apply to you as well. You're in college at age 12 or 15 or whatever it is. So if you're 17 or below, if you're a minor, we cannot release that information to your parents unless you've given us written consent to do so. Now, simultaneously though, so you may be thinking at this point, oh, so for all intents and purposes, they're basically adults. Not really. Because... If I want, if I have any 17 year olds here in my data set, I must go to their parents and seek their consent before I can use the data. Really, I'm supposed to do that before I collect the data, but I told IRB, if I have any 17 year olds, I'm dropping them from the data. So why, why are they considered adults? Um, in terms of being able to safeguard their own information, but they're not adults when it comes to participating in studies. I have no idea. It's messed up that it's that way. It shouldn't be that way in my opinion, but it is. And so um, I'll probably write some letters to some high powered politicians who are gonna ignore me um, here in the States and make them aware of that fact that it's goofy, that they're adults in one instance, but not the other instance. And in both cases, we're talking about protection in terms of identity and data and that type of stuff. But anyway, I just wanted to, to bring that to your attention. And so as part of creating the age variable, then we have to, if, unless you obtain consent from all minors, guardians, or parents, which I didn't, that's a, that's an obscene amount of extra work I'm not going to do. And I, I don't think it would be possible anyway. A lot of my students, um, their homes are there. They commute, right? They either fly in or they drive in. Um, and they spend a semester or whatever in, and, and during break, during the summer break or whatever, they go back home to a different country. So there's no way in the world that I'm going to be able to probably that I'm going to be able to reach out and find their parents, even if I wanted to. So that's a huge headache. I'm not going to do. 
Okay, so now that we have this, um, actually, that's a good point. I am. I'm going to try something really quickly. I should have. I should have planned this out beforehand. This is going to give me an error message when I delete because I don't want to have that row there forever. Okay, so what we're going to do then is we're going to put 2023, and then maybe do F4. Yeah, we can't do the F4. Okay, so then what we're going to do instead, I think, is I'm going to come over to. Let's see. I don't want. I just don't want to have the row above. That makes. I mean. I guess that's not really not a big deal. It's just going to be floating out here. I mean, maybe this could be like the notes. It just makes it hard when we're trying to filter because it's an additional column. You know what? I think. I think I know what I'm going to do here. I'm going to just delete this. Instead of age, I'm going to put 2023. Because I know I know that that's the age, right? I know that that's I know that that's the age, um, the age, whatever. So now I click on this, and now I hit F four, okay, and it's going to do the exact same thing, okay. Because and here's the reason, right? Is that did I freeze the top row? I don't know if I froze the top row. Okay, yeah. So freezing the top row, good. Okay. Because what I want to do now is I want to filter really quickly. Smallest to largest. Ex always expand the selection when you do this. Okay. So only one person is 17. Good. So this is what I'm talking about. It, it, go watch my previous video about the unique identifiers, the anonymity video. Uh, because what's happening here, right? What's going to happen here is I'm going to wind up removing the 17-year-old from the... Uh, from the data because um, that person is a minor and I did not obtain consent from parent legal guardian and so I told IRB I would just drop that person from the data set so highlight that row delete and now we are down to 301 observations now how do we get back because right now the data is filtered by age from lowest to highest right from age 18 all the way to I guess this person didn't give an age. Yeah, this person didn't give an age, so I'm gonna delete that because okay, from to sixty. Um, <clears throat> and so remember, this was across different institutions, right? And some institutions are more have more traditional age students, some don't. Some are continuing education adults or whatever. Non traditional age students. There we go. That's what I meant to say. All right. So how do we get this back? The data back into its original form. Similar to what I talked about in the anonymity video that was published just before this one. Um, what we're going to do is we create the, these unique identifiers and we alphabetize them at the start. And that was our default data configuration. So we're going to highlight this and then we're going to go to sort and filter and we're going to do A to Z. Expand the selection. There you go. So now the data is back. So remember the very first age person that we had was 21. So we are now back to the original configuration of the data. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.